I usually review retro stuff here, but hey, almost every retro gamer owns a Switch right now, be it for modern stuff or for some retro inspired indie gaming. And now that lots of people are taking their system along on the road, I figured why not do a little Switch accessory review to cover just that. One of the cool things about the Switch is the portable mode. And sure, the light switch is coming up, but I like to have the option to connect it to a TV, even when I bring the system along for travel. And for me, the system is portable enough. There are all kinds of bags and sleeves and things for it, so no problems there. But that dock man, it's huge! And it's the only way to have TV out and charge at the same time, unless you want to use a third party dock that will cause your switch to get damaged or even explode. Well, the internet says so, so it must be true, right? Luckily there are solutions, where you can use a small dock but still use the internals of the original. Small form factor, no more scratching issues, no explosions, yay! You see, 90% of the dock is made out of plastic. The rest consists of two PCBs for everything, not counting the tiny LED board. There is no reason why it can't have a smaller shell. And these things are pretty neat. You don't need any soldering skills or any other modding skills at all. If you can handle a little screwdriver and are at least a little careful, you can do this. From what I've seen, there are free models apart from some expensive 3D printed dongles and they all have their own pros and cons, so let's check them out. All of these are sold at Amazon under various third party brands, but can also be found by Chinese sellers on eBay or AliExpress, often for much cheaper. The manual might be crappier, but they come with exactly the same screws, screwdrivers and everything. I'm pretty positive these have been rebranded for Western resellers. This first model is most commonly sold under GM Top or HDE brand. It reuses the lead of the original dock as well as the little spring. The plastic feels kind of cheap and the gaps for airflow are huge. You can look right into the PCB. And about that, the board does not fit very snugly. And because of that, the HDMI and power connectors have too much room, causing the cables to have a wonky connection sometimes. Another downside of this model is how it's designed so that the switch is mostly supported by the connector and not by the dongle. I'll get back to this in a bit. The installation for this was rather easy. Just make sure you press that LED into that slot nice and tight and it will shine very brightly. I really like how they designed that part. All in all, this dock does the job, but I'm not blown away. The second model is usually sold under the Boss Top brand and is probably the easiest to find. It does not use the original dock's LED and also no spring, so you have to unscrew the switch connector with prongs completely. Also, to make sure the inner board sits snug, make sure to fasten the inside screws too, which I uh, totally did on my first try. Unfortunately mine didn't come with any instructions and I don't think the other branded ones do. Rubber pads for the bottom are not included so the whole thing is not very stable and very minimalistic without the lead and the prongs. But the trade-off is the sleekest most lightweight travel friendly design you will get. Also the used plastic is less flimsy than the first model. And the final model is most commonly sold under the Link Style brand. It's quite easy to assemble and comes with the exact amount of screws needed, so better keep those safe. Assembling this is easy but a bit trickier than the other two. Like on the first model you have to get the LED in the right place and to do that they included tweezers, which come in quite handy. Also you have to align the springs for the docking mechanism, which is easy but requires some attention. The last part is what makes this dock a little different. It uses the original dock's full spring mechanism for the USB-C to switch port, so the switch rests on two plastic spikes on either side of the port. This helps to guide the switch nicely into the connector, but also makes the dock a bit more wobbly when you first plug it in. To avoid this, the dock comes with two little gripper pads that are mentioned in the instructions. But sticking them at either side of the mechanism fixes this and makes for a perfect snug fit. On the bottom you'll find pre-installed rubber pads so the dock sits stable next to the TV. Because the PCB is flipped on this model your HDMI and power connectors are now on the other side. Overall I really like this design. 
Comparing the three, I don't think there's any good reason to get the first model. It's made out of cheap plastic and the PCB isn't a very snug fit. I don't like how the corners are designed so that the switch rests mostly on the connector. It's the most fragile part of the whole dock concept and you don't want to stress it too much. I think the other two models are both great. The second model has the advantage of being very lightweight, travel friendly and well designed, but it does not use the LED board, though if you're handy I'm sure you can drill a hole and get it in there. And while the other two models had crappy manuals, this one did not include a manual at all in my case. But unless you've never opened anything up before, it's very self-explanatory. Just make sure to screw everything together nicely so the connectors are well laid out. Personally, I would choose the third model. I really like how they reuse the entire spring mechanism with the small plastic spikes. The design puts the least stress on the USB-C switch connector and still has the LED too. In case you're wondering, all of these models have enough gaps and holes for airflow and would not heat up my switch or dock too much when I use them. So I felt no need to compare this, however I did notice the Bastop branded Model 2 case does not have ventilation holes, so there's that. In conclusion, I think these little mini docks are pretty cool and best of all, these mods are completely reversible as long as you keep your original screws. So that will be all for this review. Let me know if you think of buying one of these and until next time.